guys. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Respawn Grant, and as always, my co-host, Real Batman. Um, how you doing today, man? Doing good. good. Weather sucks, but as we're inside, we're staying warm, we're staying healthy, and hopefully everybody out there is staying healthy and safe. That's right. That's right. Um, as you guys know, uh, this is Collector's Thoughts, where we kind of talk about a, a topic, anything from action figures to video games or news, and uh, today's topic was something we wanted to have a little fun with. Uh, a lot of people always talk about how bad certain movies are and stuff like that, especially in the superhero genre. And we wanted to really touch base on these two movies. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 versus Batman and Robin. So both movies are, in, in our, our opinion, not good. But if we had to pick one for being the worst, I want you to go first because I already have mine in mind. <laughs> Watch Turtles three. Unfortunately, um, it was uh, <laughs> it was tough to watch. So, let me tell you something. When your three three and a half year old son says the movie sucks, halfway <laughs> through the movie, <laughs> Pretty bad. you know it's bad. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> well, he loves turtles, but uh, yeah, he straight up said this movie stinks. That's <laughs> he looks at me and goes, Daddy, this movie stinks. <laughs> My daughter said the same thing. She's five, so. Um, that's pretty early and young age. And, uh, if they're picking it up, that speaks volumes. Um, um, which one's worse? They're both pretty God awful, uh, cheesy and corny as all hell. Yep. Um, you'll probably be surprised, but if I have to pick one that's worse, it's Batman or Robin. Oh, wow. I'm picking turtles three. <laughs> this is good. Because now we're on opposite fences. We can talk about both equally. That's good. All right. So why Batman okay. and Robin, though? Go ahead. Why? I hate George Clooney's nipples. I can't stand those nipples either. <laughs> but other than that, though, what, what, what else besides the nipples, though? Um, I just didn't like the whole movie. Like, the background, the way they, they – when, when the Batmobile's driving, it's hopping like it's a kid's toy. Yeah. Like, the whole yeah. thing was just garbage. Yeah. Um. The acting, like, it, it was just garbage. It, it, I mean, at least for Turtles 3, as corny as it was, there was some humor in the movie that at times I was like, okay, I can get a chuckle out of that. Yeah, There's nothing to chuckle out of Batman and Robin. It's just flat out bad. Just yeah. bad acting. I mean, maybe, I guess, the only saving grace for that movie, in my opinion, was Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Um, Schwartz playing Mr. Freeze. Um, he's the only one that actually did a good job in that movie. Everybody else could have just gone, gone straight to hell and died of gonorrhea. I could care less. See, see, here's the thing. That's what I was going to say with, with why I think I like the Batman one better was I think Arnold Schwarzenegger did a really good job as Mr. Freeze. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, the other thing that kind of saves me from picking that one is the, the fresh memory of Val Kilmer's boring ass Batman performance was like I was falling asleep during if he was the one if he was Batman in the fourth one that would have been the worst one but I think George Clooney nipples and all kind of saved the movie a tiny bit him and Arnold Schwarzenegger in my opinion made the movie uh at least somewhat enjoyable and I like the fact that there was um like still some action in that movie and you could kind of see where they were going with like the corniness with it Whereas the turtles' corniness was so bad at times that I was like, "Dear God, what what is the point? Like, I don't get it. Like, some of the jokes, like for example, when Donatello, there's a part where the bad guys barge in and the turtles are there, and then Donatello says, "Who are you expecting? The Adams family?" And just that weird thing with his head. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, I don't I don't get it. Is it? What does the Adams family have to do with any of this? There's not even four members of the family for Adams family. I don't, I don't get it. It's it's bad. They're both very bad. I, I, I actually had a hard time picking which one was worse. It yeah. took me to it took me till now I want to say a half like no not now uh, pretty close to that though. It it yeah. took me up until almost we started shooting this to make a, a, a pick because I was having a hard time picking because they both suck. I mean, Clooney's nipples suck. Uh, uh, 
the turtles, uh, the costumes changed a little bit. And the other thing that really bothered me in, in, in that movie, The Turtles 3, was like, here's the thing. You make three movies, right? The first one and then the second one with the Super Shredder, which was watchable. And especially the first one I can remember when, when they talked, the mouths, because those yeah. were like, they, they tended to move more or less accurately with what they were saying. And three, it was like, it was mo it was moving way faster than what it just, it was just terrible. Like you're supposed to upgrade the movies as they go on yeah. and perfect the suits. They went ass backwards on that. So this, it was hard to pick one. It really was. Yeah. And, and the other, the other thing too, is like, um, like for example, the one thing I liked about the turtle movie that, that like you brought up, there was some comical parts. Like I actually, uh, Jordan actually chuckled at a few parts. Like one part in particular was when Michelangelo tried to make a pizza and he burned it. So then he ends up biting it. He couldn't bite it. And he's like, Frisbee, also cool. It throws it and hits that guy in the head and then hits Donnie with it. That was pretty funny, dude. But it was just too far in between. And there was like almost no action in that movie. It was so, it, there was some action, don't get me wrong. But like, there wasn't much of the four turtles together. The other thing is the story made absolutely no sense. Like, how the hell is it that four guys, first of all, why did they have to go back in time in Japan? There's like a bazillion here, uh, villains that they could have used for that movie. Instead, they made up villains that weren't even in, in the cartoon or anything. So that was one problem, whereas at least Batman used villains that actually existed. Uh, the other problem, too, is the storyline. It's like, okay, you're telling me these four samurais weigh the same amount as four gigantic turtles? What the hell does – how does that work? Dude, they, they have – shell, the shells alone are heavier than the people. I don't know. But yet they're trying to tell us that the weight is what made them move it. I don't know, man. The storyline was weird. And um, and then, like I said, even when they entered, like the beginning, like they're all dancing and having fun. And then for the hell of it, Raphael just decides, I'm going to break the stereo. What the hell right. is that? Why? Just because he's supposed to be grumpy? I, I don't know, man. It, like I said – it just that movie was they were all they were both cringe but that one i'm sitting half the time just scratching my head like this is worse than i remember man <laughs> this was bad it was that when, when your kids who are three and a half and five say the movie's bad yeah <laughs> that's pretty bad but in all fair they also don't like batman and robin either yeah yeah uh they they, they don't my daughter said that uh batman looks weird and i quote yep. in this because she's watched Batman Begins with me. She's a little bit older and she loves it. My son loves Batman. Uh, they watched the Dark Knight trilogy uh, in, in spurts where it's where I allowed them to watch it. They watched the 89 one. They watched um, – people are probably going to think I'm a bad father for this, but <laughs> I've let them watch a little bit of Dawn of Justice. And oh, good. What's next? Freddy Krueger, you bastard? <laughs> Actually, they Elm Street. I've let him watch like five minutes of Walking Dead, so I. I, I <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, uh, but uh, so they've never said that, like everything. Like they get excited when they see those Batman's. The George Clooney brought no excitement. <laughs> Not yeah, it, it, so. yeah. It was it was ridiculous. Like, I mean, the nipples are one thing, but it was also like he he talked he spoke way too much in that movie. He, he was like a reporter. It's like, dude, shut up. What are you doing? People are going to, people probably knew it was him. It was probably one of those things when he would leave like the scene, they're like, does, does Bruce Wayne not know that we know it's him? Does he think he doesn't even change his voice? Do, we know it's him. And the little boy he keeps hanging out with, it's the same kid at his, at his house. We know it's him. <laughs> and, and the other really aggravated me in that movie was the, 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 the competing between him and Robin for yeah. what was it? Maybe. It's like, okay, dude, what, when did this become a freaking soap opera? Like, what is this shit? Like, yeah. it's, it's just garbage, dude. I can't, I, can't, I can't do either movie. I had to pick one. Uh, I picked George Clooney's nipples because they suck. The bat suit sucks. And you say Val Kilmer sucks. They equally suck. Val Kilmer was motionless. He had no I, – I, I hear what you're saying, but to me, um, at least – Val Kilmer's bat suit was respectable. And for those of you who didn't know, when they were making Batman Begins, they actually used Val Kilmer's suit wow. for the tryout and, and 
for the beginning stages of, 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 of they ain't going to use George Cooley's nipples. That's for damn sure. Right, so, right. Um, so, uh, again, it, what, part of the things, I agree with you on Val Kilmer, but one of the things that saves that movie from being worse than George Clooney's was the fact that Jim Carrey playing Riddler, which I didn't think he was bad. Apparently, you don't feel the same way, but that's fine. We don't have to agree on everything. Right. And that suit was just, it was better. I do agree with you that they pretty, it, it just seems like they just told him, go out there and show absolutely no emotion. Don't get into the role. Just like read the lines, memorize the lines and just. Yeah. yeah. That's, I, I do agree with you on that. But George Clooney, that whole movie, I have a problem with that whole movie. In my opinion, that is the worst Batman. I mean, I was watching the other day, the Adam West uh, TV series with my son, the Adam West Batman. Uh, he loves it. And I watched it. I watched it with him, and that's definitely kid friendly, by the way. Um, <laughs> unlike the other ones, I let him watch. A Trying to bit. save yourself now, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As he walks in the background with like a Jason mask on. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, he'll fit right in with the rest of the world. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and it's when you watch that show, and that's from the seventies or sixties. Is it the sixties? I think it's the sixties, sixty-seven. To, to 1970, I believe. I don't want to misspeak. Correct us in the comments below if I'm like getting a brain fart right now. But but my point is, when that's not as corny as a movie that was pushing the year 2000, ooh, yeah. brutal. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's tough because I always try to be optimistic about everything, like figures, mm. movies, whatever. But like I said, man, both both movies that we're talking about right now, the, the uh, Batman and Robin and Turtles 3, I, I remember growing up and actually somewhat enjoying those movies and then coming back to them recently, with, actually within this year. And uh, I already knew they were bad because I had seen them, you know, many years ago after I had already grown up a little bit and realized they were bad. But rewatching them now, you realize how bad they really are. Because l like I just, like, like we just said, n not only were the costumes bad, the storyline was, was bad. Um, you pretty much just grip for anything to somewhat salvage the movie. Like, honestly, Mr. Freeze and, and, and Batman Robin, in my opinion, really did help that movie become manageable. It, I really think that he did a good job. Um, and then in the, in the Turtles one, um, the thing that really saved it for me anyway was Casey Jones. He came back. He was babysitting the guys like at the at the at, in, in New York. That was funny. Like he's sitting there teaching them hockey and stuff. Like that was pretty good. I'm like, all right, cool. But you can definitely see how, uh, it, um, I guess like how influential uh, the public can be because yeah. you know for a fact when you see the first movies in both series, and then you see how they each became more, um trying to be lighthearted, but also ruining the movies by doing that, that was not a decision that they originally would have done. Because if that was, then the first movies would have been like that too. It was definitely pressure. Because uh, I remember when the first Turtles movie came out, and um, especially the Turtles movie, I remember more backlash from parents back then, saying it was too violent, and they would not allow the kids to go watch it again. Um, so it, it, you're right. It, it definitely had a lot to do with backlash from parents at the time saying it was just way too violent. And I know that the 89 Batman was also had some of that where it was too dark and it was just, so um, they kind of slowly and Batman returns. It wasn't as dark, but it was still a good, very good movie. Yeah. And they really started to veer away from, you know, from that, that darker, you know, more realistic um, based on, you know, it's, they had their own plots and stuff, but they were kind of trying to stay true to the real you know, fan of Batman and, and the comics and keep it dark and, and certainly, like, and they started to veer away from that. And they went to, uh, with Val Kilmer, it started to become, like, you know, you're trying to get under my cape, doctor. Like, corny-ass lines. Yeah. And I know I repeat, because those are the ones that stick out so badly. Like, certain parts of, the, of these those last two movies that were bad. But I'm sorry. The Batman and Robin has more lines that stick out that just make me want to, like, grab whoever was involved with that movie and just beat the holy crap 
part of them. That that's how bad that movie pissed me off. But see, that's the thing. Like when you think of like the first Batman movie, the second Batman movie, the first Turtles movie, even the second Turtles movie. When you, at least me personally, when when I think back at like the highlights of those movies, like for example, the Ninja Turtles, the first movie. One thing that stands out big time for me is that fight at the end with Shredder on the roof. I love, love, love that fight. That fight is so amazing, so well done, even to the point where if you really pay attention, each turtle attacks Shredder as they would if they were actually real life people. Like you see, and I'm not talking about the first part where Raphael's kind of cocky and then Leo does that like lunch thing. I'm talking about that second part when the music starts playing. You have Raphael going straight for his head because he's, he's trying to take him out right away. He doesn't want to mess around. You have Donatello who's sitting there and trying to be strategic. He goes high, mid, medium, and then low. And it didn't work. Michelangelo kind of being a little more silly, a little jumping around. Then you have Leo who's more like uh, balanced, kind of attacking him, but not full-fledged going in, kind of being more cautious. They did such a good job with that. Uh, the second movie, um, the Super Shredder, yeah, but for me, uh, I liked a lot was the Tokon Razor. That those characters alone be introduced. Oh, when Raphael's fighting the, the foot soldiers in the uh, the um, the, uh, the dump, that the, the uh, well, I'm blanking right now. But you know what I'm talking about. He fights them all when uh, 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 Kino has to take off to go get the others. And then in the third movie, I think, what were you expecting? The Adams family? Like, what a big difference, dude. It's just not <laughs> there. You know what I mean? And then, like you said, with Val Kilmer and the uh, getting under my cape, Doctor, you have that. And then when you look at, like, the first one, what do you remember? George uh, – I mean, um, no, not George Clooney. <laughs> you remember Michael Keaton, <laughs> the bad guy, right? Who are you? I'm Batman. Something cool like that. That's what sticks in your mind with that first movie. So th that's where they yeah. learned it is where you think about those first movies and how there's something cool or epic that sticks in your mind. And then with the later one, just something corny or something bad. It's like, like that's what sticks in your mind. And to show you – this is before internet and these parents and stuff were able to get that much pressure on these big movie companies to change, to make these movies the way they ended up becoming and ruining the franchise. So imagine nowadays where every single person has a voice that they can type whatever they want or post or whatever, you know, whatever they want on social media, these movie companies and game companies that have a lot more to bite off, like to worry about. Because every person can type something now. Whereas back then, you have to actually call or, like, send a letter. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's true. Uh, uh, all of what you said is stated right now is uh, very factual. And, again, like, what defines a movie is uh, iconic lines. And when I think about, like, the 89 movie, it's on Batman. And there's plenty of other ones that I could bring up, but that would drag on this this this. Yeah. Um, and think about iconic lines. It, it, it's like, well, there's good iconic lines and then there's the bad ones. And uh, trying to get it on my cake, Doctor, is an iconic bad line. Um, yep. Motionless acting is just very bad. Um, <clears throat> the George Clooney one, there is no, the whole thing is bad from beginning to end. It's just bad. It's bad. Like the, the, the quarrel between them, like who's better. And, and over, fighting over poison. Look, what, is, what is this? When, when did this become a soap opera? Like, what is this crap? So, again, it's those iconic moments that define any movie, uh, whatever franchise it is. And um, neither one of those movies, whether it's The Turtles 3, whether it's Batman and Robin, Batman Forever, although I think Batman and Robin, to a more extent, uh, just it's just bad. Um there is no icon lines that I can think of that I can sit there and say, all right, all right. Um, it's just, it's just, it just isn't. For me, there isn't. Maybe you guys can tell us. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe there isn't a kind of line that we're not remembering. But for me, all I remember is bad. And I watched both of them recently, and they're bad. Bad. Both. See, that, that's, that's, what I would, that's what interests me the most is, like, maybe because of our age and, like, when we saw these movies, that plays a factor in it. Because I'm wondering if anybody's out there like that, you know, maybe was uh, younger when they had watched Turtles 3 or, or Batman and Forever. How do you feel about it? Maybe you liked those movies. Maybe you still like those movies and you think we're crazy. I would like to know because a part of me always, always wondered 
Is it so much the movie itself or is it the experience that you went through the first time? Because I've had discussions with people. I'm 34 years old. So you're about 10 years older than I am. I've had, I have friends that are also somewhat older than me sometimes. And I have friends that are younger than me. And I've had discussions with them where they, we talk about uh, like certain things that we really like as our favorite, whatever. And it's amazing to see sometimes the older person tells me what their favorite is of something or a favorite character. And then I talk to the younger person and it, it almost seems like it does follow your age. Like, for example, I'm going to use this one as an example, the Power Rangers. Me growing up, I loved the Green Ranger. He was my favorite Ranger. A buddy of mine who's about uh, six years younger than me, he loves the White Ranger, which was the next version of the Green Ranger. So right there, that kind of shows that he grew up and he, when he was watching Power Rangers, he was already the White Ranger. He did watch some of the Green Ranger, but he already grew to love that White Ranger. Me, it was the green. Um, then you talk to people that are even older and, and they might like, uh, like the Adam West. That might be their Batman. That's the one that they love. For me and you, it's more Michael Keaton. And then for the newer generation, it might be Christian Bale. So it makes me wonder, is it just when we experience that movie? Like, what if we had watched Turtles 3 first? Would we still feel that way, you think? No. I mean, if my, if my three-and-a-half-year-old my five-year-old say it's a bad movie, not even halfway through, I don't know if it would have changed. Yeah. I don't know if it would have changed. See, point. there are the movies that you can make that argument, and I agree with you, but these two that we're comparing are so bad that, I mean, come on, think about this. Like, seriously, I'm not making this up. When a three-and-a-half-year-old and a, a five-year-old say the movie stinks, yeah, yeah, there's problems there, dude. That's, that's pretty bad. Well, you I know what? It changed. I don't think it would have changed at all. The only thing it would have changed would have been like, okay, this is god awful. Right. And then the first turtle is ends up being the third installment. I would have been like, well, why didn't you do that in the first place? Yeah, yeah. See, you're not you're not fully wrong because I had watched the first one with with Jordan, who's uh eight, he just recently turned eight. We had watched a couple of years ago, and he actually watched the whole thing. Whereas with the third one he was sitting with me and he kept like zoning out. Like he would keep, he'd watch a little bit, then he would get up and play with his toys, then come back and watch a little bit, then go play with his toys. So he obviously didn't care. He didn't tell me the movie stunk. He didn't tell me he didn't like it, but you can tell. Cause the first movie he sat there and watched the whole thing. The, the third one, he kept getting up. So. Well, my, my, my kids were very vocal about that. I thought it was yeah. the first thing he thinks. He said, this yeah. movie's terrible, daddy. <laughs> I don't like this movie. <laughs> Can we'll be watching this. Can we watch something else? Yeah. That, that's uh, it, that happened, man. That's not. I'm not making it up to try to boost my opinion. It's that happened. That, oh, I that, believe. I remember I looking at my wife and I went, "Wow, this movie is pretty damn bad." If a five year old is saying, "Can we put something else on?" Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. It was it was not good. Um, I recently had to rewatch it too, and it. It was tough to get through. I'm not going to lie. I was like, dude, this is the longest hour and a half ever. <laughs> this is brutal, man. So, I mean, one thing we can agree on, they both stink. So, there you go. Yep. Clooney's nipples stink and Adam's family's <laughs> – that wasn't any better. So. No, no. But you guys let us know what you think. Are we crazy? Are, are, are these movies being unjustly bashed by us? Because I know we've talked about George Clooney's nipples on this channel before. So yeah. – Yep. Uh, but if you like it, there's nothing wrong with that. But let us know. Um, are these movies this bad or are we just being a little bit harsh? Let us know in the comment section below. Yeah, yeah no, it'd be, it'd be great. I mean, I would, I would love to hear, you know, everyone's opinion on it and see what they mm -hmm. think. Because um... – But that's all I got on, on this particular topic. Um, yeah, me too. But you guys just let us know. Let us know. Are we being too harsh? Uh, um do you like the movies? Uh, do you not think they're that bad? Let us know. Yeah, no, it'd be, it'd be great. So uh, that's all we got, guys. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, giving us some time and watching our video. And please like, comment, subscribe, and take care, guys. Stay safe.